In 1995, thousands of women panicked after the UK Committee for the Safety of Medicines issued a release saying that a certain kind of contraceptive pill doubled the risk of a venous thromboembolism. That's the result of a blood clot. Thousands of women stopped taking their pill and the result later on was a big spike in abortions in the UK. Let's look at how that risk could have been communicated better. The claim of a doubling of risk is known as a relative risk and these are very often used by the media. But the problem is that it's impossible to interpret this doubling and know its importance without knowing what double what. And for that, we need to know the absolute risk of a venous thromboembolism in the group of people not taking a pill. Another time, this was estimated to be about 1 in 7,000. So the doubling takes that up to 2 in 7,000 in the group of women who are taking that contraceptive pill. So the increase in absolute risk is 1 in 7,000. And this, to be honest, is fairly small. We think this is a much better way to communicate that risk. And perhaps if, if it had been done that way in 1995, there would not have been such negative consequences. Let's look at another example. You've probably all seen those headlines about the dangers of eating bacon or sausages. And my favourite was, careless pork costs lives. There was a flurry of such headlines after a study put together the evidence linking processed meat with bowel cancer. One of their findings was that 50 grams of extra processed meat a day, that's around about a bacon sandwich, was linked to an 18% increase in the risk of getting bowel cancer during your lifetime. Now, we cannot interpret that relative risk without knowing 18% of what. And for that, we need to know the baseline absolute risk of getting bowel cancer in a group of people who eat the normal amount of bacon. So we have to go to another source, and if we go to Cancer Research UK, they'll tell us that this is round about 6% risk. Now, an 18% increase over 6 percentage points takes us to 7% risk in people who are eating an extra bacon sandwich every day. So that's an increase of one percentage point. Another very good way of communicating this increase in risk is to look at what it means for 100 people, what's known as expected frequencies. And we can say that out of 100 people eating the normal amount of bacon, we would expect six of them to get bowel cancer, very sadly, during their lifetime. But let's compare that with 100 other people, all of whom eat a bacon sandwich extra every day, and we would expect then one extra case of bowel cancer. That's the 6% rising to 7%. Now, 100 people eating a bacon sandwich every day is about 35, 36,000 bacon sandwiches a year, maybe 2 million over this 100 lifetimes. And actually, I think that puts the risk into perspective. The main conclusion is to be very cautious about using relative risks on their own, and wherever possible to translate them into differences in absolute risks. And then these can be expressed in terms of expected frequencies. We've written an online tool called Real Risk, which will help you do all this and can even provide you with icon arrays. Right, I'm off for a bacon sandwich.